How to Talk to Your Mother by John Hansen, 1982. Without her for years now, murmur at the defrosting refrigerator. What? Huh? Shush now. As it creaks, aches, groans, until the final ice block drops from the ceiling of the refreezer like something vanquished. Dream, and in your dreams, babies with the personalities of Dutchons, fat as Macy balloons, float by the treetops. The first permanent polyurethane heart is surgically implanted. Someone upstairs is playing. You never walk alone on the recorder. Now it's Oklahoma. They must have a Rogers and Hammerstein book. 1981. On public transportation, mothers with soft, soapy, corduroyed seraphs glance at you. Their faces dominoes of compassion. Their seraphs are small and quiet, or else restlessly counting but seat colors. Blue, 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 red, 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 la 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 la. The mothers see you eyeing their children. They smile sympathetically. They believe you envy them. They believe you're childless. They believe they know why. Look quickly away, out the smudge of the window. 1980. The hum, rush, clack of things in the kitchen. There are some of the sounds that organize your life. The cling of the silverware inside the drawer. Powled like bones in a mass grave. The smells grow grim, grow tired. Reagan is elected president, though you distributed donuts and brochures for Carter. Date an Italian, he rubs your stomach and says, These are marks of stretch. No, marks of stretch. And in your dizzy mind, you think, Marks of Harpo, ideas of marks. Ides of March, beware. He plants kisses on the sloping rump of your neck, and you fall asleep against him. Your underpants peeled and rolled around one thigh like a bridge's garter. 1979. Once in a while, take evening's trips past the old unsold house you grew up in, that haunted rural crossroads two hours from where you now live. It's like Halloween. The rigged moonlit lawn, the mammoth tumid trees, arms and fingers raised into the starless wipe of sky, like burns, cracks, map rivers. The black shadows rock against the side of the east porch. There are dream shadows, are the lives here. Turn the corner slowly, but continue to stare from the car window. This house is embedded in you deep. Something's still here, you know. You think you know. A voice at the top of those stairs, perhaps a figure on the porch, an old person, caught high in twigs, in the too warm for a fall night breeze. Something not right. That turret window you can still see from here, from outside, but which can be reached from within, the ghostly brag of your childhood. You have a mystery room. The window shows from the front, but you can't go in. There is no door. A doctor lived here years ago and gave secret operations, and now it's blocked off. The window sits like a dead eye in the turret. You see a ghost. Something like a spinning statue by a shrub. 1978. Bury her in the cold south side yard of that Halloweenish house. Your brother and, your, and his kids are here. Hug. The minister is in a tweed sports coat. The neighborless fields, the crossroads, are all like some stark Kansas. There is praying and someone shoveling. People walk toward the cars and hug again. Get inside your car with your knees. Wait. Look up through the windshield. In the November sky, a wedge of wrens moves south. The lines of the formation, the very sides and vertices, mysteriously choreographed, shifting, flowing, 
crossing like a skater's legs. They will descend instinctively upon a tree somewhere, you say, but not for miles. You marvel, watch until Amobaslo. They are dark, far away stitches in the horizon. You do not start the car. The quiet knees next to you finally speaks. Aunt Ginny, are we going to the restaurant with the others? Look at her, recognize her. Nine in a pile, Parker. Smile and start the car. 1977, she ages. Rocks in your rocker, noiseless as wind. The front strands of her white hair dangle, yellow as her eyes, from too many cigarettes. She smokes even now. Her voice husky with phlegm. Sometimes at dinner in your tiny kitchen, she'll simply stare, roomy eyed at you, then burst into a fit of coughing that racks a small old man's body like a storm. Stop eating your big potato. Ask if she's all right. She'll croak. Do you remember Ginny? Your father used to say that one day, with these cigarettes, I was going to have to face the mucus. At this, she chuckles, chokes, gasps again. Make her stand up. Lean her against you. Slap her slightly on the curved mound of her back. Ask her for Chris Axe to stop smoking. She will smile and say, for Chris Axe. Is that any way to talk to your mother? At night, go in and check on her. She lies there awake, her lips apart, open and dry. Bring her some juice. She murmurs, thank you, honey. Her mouth smells, swells like a grave. Bicentennial, 1976. In the laundromat, you wait for the time when your coins to run out. Through the porthole of the dryer, you watch your bedeviled towels and sheets leap and fall. The radio station piped in from the ceiling place slow. Sad Motown, it encircles you with the desperate hopefulness of a boy at a dance. And it makes you cry. When you get back to your apartment, dump everything in your bed. Your mother is knitting crookedly red, white and blue. Kiss her hello. Say sure was warm in that place. She will seem not to hear you. 1975. Attend poetry readings alone at the local library. Find you don't really listen well. Stare at your crossed thighs. Think about your mother. Sometimes you confuse her with the first man you ever loved. Who ever loved you? Who buried his head in the pillows of your sweater and said magnificent things like, Oh God, oh God. Who loved you unconditionally, terrifically, like your mother. The poet loses his nerve for a second, a red flush through his neck and ears, but he gains his composure. When he's finished, people clap, there's wine and cheese. Leave alone, walk home alone. The downtown streets are corridors of light holding you, holding you past the church, past the community center. March like Stella Delas, spine straight through the melodrama of street lamps, phone post toward the green house past Borealis Avenue, toward the rear apartment with a tilt and the squash on the stove. Your horoscope says, be kind, be brief. You're pregnant again, decide what you must do. 1974. She'll have bouts with a mad sort of senility. She calls you at work. There is no food here. Help me, I'm starving. 
Although you just bought forty dollars worth of groceries yesterday. Mom, there is two food there. When you get home, the refrigerator is mostly empty. Mom, where did you put all the milk and cheese and stuff? Your mother stares at you from where she's sitting in front of the TV set. She has tears leaking out of her eyes. There is no food here, Jenny. There is rustling, scratching noise in the dishwasher. You open it up and the eyes of a small rodent glint back at you. It scrambles out off to the baseboard behind the refrigerator. Your mother apparently has put all the groceries inside the dishwasher. The milk is spilled in a white pool against blue and things like cheese and bologna and apples have been nibbled at. 1973 At a party when a woman tells you where she bought some wonderful pair of shoes say that you believe shopping for clothes is like masturbation. Everyone does it. But it isn't very interesting and therefore should be done alone in an embarrassed fashion and never be the topic of a party conversation. The woman would tighten her lip and eyebrows and say, Oh, I suppose you have something more fascinating to talk about. Grow clumsy and uneasy, say no, and head for the ginger ale. Tell the person next to you that your insides feel sort of sinking and vile like a class Oldenburg toilet. They will say, oh, and point out that the print of your dress is one of the Paisley's impregnating Paisley's. Pour yourself some more ginger ale. 1972. Nixon wins by a landslide. Sometimes your mother calls you by her sister's name. Say, no mom, it's me, Virginia. Learn to repeat things. Learn that you have a way of knowing each other which somehow slips out and beyond the way you have not of not knowing each other at all. Make up or Chris for the first time. 1971 Go for long walks to get away from her. Walk through wooded areas. There is a life there you have forgotten. The smells and sounds seem sudden, unchanged, exact. The papery crunch of the leaves. The mouldering sachet of the mud trees are crooked as backs and fence posts splintered, trusting and precarious in the solid grasp of arms. The aster spindly, dry white, have shamed, have shamed by frost. Find a beautiful reddish stone and bring it home for your mother. Kiss her. Say this is for you. She grasps it and smiles. You are always such a sensitive child, she says. Say, yeah, I know. 1970, you are pregnant again. Try to decide what you should do. Get your hair chopped. Short as a boy's. 1969. Mankind leaps upon the moon. Disposable diapers are first sold in the supermarkets. Have occasional affairs with absurd silly men who tell you to grow your hair to your waist and who, when you're sad, tickle your ribs to cheer you up. Moonlight through the blind stripes you like a zebra. You laugh. You never marry. 1968. Do not resent her. Think about the situation. For instance, when you take the last trash bag from its box, you must throw out the box by putting it in that very trash bag. What was once contained now must contain. The container then becomes the contained, the enveloped, the held. Find more and more that you like to muse over things like this. 1967. Your mother is sick and comes to live with you. There is no place else for her to go. You feel many different emptiness. 
The first successful heart transplant is performed in South Africa. We confuse lovers, mix up who had what scar, what ear, what car, what mother. 1965, smoke marijuana. Try to figure out what has made your life go wrong. It's like trying to figure out what is stinking up the refrigerator. It could be anything. The lid of the mayonnaise. Uncle Ron's honey wine. Four years in the left corner. Broccoli yellowing. Flowering fast. They're all metaphors. They're all problems, your horoscope says. Speak gently to a loved one. 1964, your mother calls long distance and asks whether you are coming home for Thanksgiving. Your brother and baby will be there. Make excuses. As a mother gets older, your mother says, these sort of holidays become increasingly important. Say, I'm sorry, mom. 1963, wake up one morning with a man you had thought you'd spend your life with and realize a rock in your gut as you don't even like him. Spend a weepy afternoon in his bathroom, not coming out when he knocks. You can no longer trust your affections. People and places you think you love, or even people and places you hate. Kennedy is shot. Someone invents a temporary artificial heart for use during operations. 1962, eat Chinese food for the first time with a lawyer from California. He will show you how to hold the chopsticks, he will pat your leg, attack your profession, ask him whether he feels the law makes large spokes out of the short stakes of men. 1961, Grandma Moses dies, you are a zoo of insecurities, you take to putting brandy in your morning coffee and to falling in love too easily. You have an abortion. 1960. There is money from your father's will and his life insurance. You buy a car and a green velvet dress you don't need. You drive two hours to meet your mother for lunch on Saturdays. So she just things for you to write about. Things she's heard in the radio. A woman with telepathic twins. A woman with no feet. 1959. At the funeral, she says, he had his problems, but he was a generous man. Though, you know, he was as tight as a scout knot. Couldn't listen to anyone. The only time you remember loving him being that once when he got the punchline of one of your jokes before your mom did and looked up from his science journal and guffawed loud as a giant and the two of you for a split moment, communing like angels in the middle of that room, in that warm shared light of mind, says he was okay. You shouldn't be better, your mother snaps. He financed you and your brother's college educations. She buttons her coat. He was also the first man to isolate, a particular isolate of helium. I forgot the name. He should have won the Nobel Prize. She dabs at her nose, saying, Yeah, Mom. 1958, at your brother's wedding, your father is taken away in an ambulance. A tiny cousin whispers loudly to your mother, Did Uncle Will have a heart attack? For seven straight days, say things to your mother like, I'm sure it will be okay. And I'll stay here, and why don't you go home and get some sleep? 1967 Dance the Calypso with the boys from a different college. Get looped in New York State Burgundy. Lose your virginity. Buy one of the first portable electric typewriters. 1956 Tell your mother all about the looks, the books you're reading at college. This will please her. Do a paint by numbers of Elvis Presley. Tell your mother you're in love with him. She'll shake her head. 
1954. Shoplift, a cashmere sweater. 1953. Smoke a cigarette with Hilary Swaldenson. Tell each other your crushes. Become blood sisters. 1952. When your mother asked you if there are any nice boys in your junior high, ask her how on earth would you ever know, having to come in at nine every night. Her eyebrows were lift, like theatre curtains. You poor abused thing, she'll say. Say, I don't know, and slam the door. 1951. Your mother tells you about menstruation. The following day, you promptly menstruate. Your body only waiting for permission, for a signal. You wake up in the morning and feel embarrassed. 1949. You learn how to blow gum bubbles and add negative numbers. 1947. The Dead Sea Scrolls are discovered. You have seen too many Hollywood musicals. You have seen too many people singing in public places and you assume you can do it too. Practice. The teacher asks you a question, you warble back. The answer to number two is 12. Most of the class laughs at you. Though some stare, owls, jewel, still fascinated. At home, your mother asks you to dust your dresser. Wake up a vibrato, you could drive a truck through, saying, Why do I have to do it now? And tap your way through the dining room. Your mother requests that you calm down and go take a nap. Shout, You don't care about me. You don't care about me at all. 1946. Your brother plays Shufli Pie all day long on the Victrola. Ask your mother if you can go to Ellen's for supper. She will say, go ask your father. And you, pulling at your fingers, walk out of the living room and whimper by his chair. He's reading. Tap his arm. Dad. Daddy. Dad. He continues reading his science journal. Pull hard on his fingers and run back to the kitchen to tell your mother, who storms into the living room saying, why don't you ever listen to your children when, when they try to talk to you? You hear them arguing, press your face into the kitchen towel, ashamed, the hum of the refrigerator motor, the drip in the sink, scaring you. 1945. Your father comes home from his war work. He gives you a piggyback ride through the yellow thatch of your yard, the dead window in the turret, dark as a wind watching you. It gives you a wordless push in the swing. Your brother has new friends, acts older and distant. Even while you wait for the school bus together, you spend too much time alone. You tell your mother that when you grow up, you will bring your babies to Australia to see kangaroos. 40,000 people are killed in Nagasaki. 1944 dress and cuddle a tiny baby doll you name the Sue bring it everywhere get lost in the Wilson Creek fruit market and call softly mom where are you watch other children picking grapes but never dare yourself your eyes are small dark throats your hand clutches the Sue 1943 ask your mother about babies have her read to you only the story about babies. Ask her if she's going to have a baby. Ask her about the baby that died. Cry into her arm. 1940. Clash your hair in your fist. Rub it against your cheek. 1939. As through a helix. As through an ear. It is here you are nearer. The dream flashes the other lives. There is a tent of legs, a sundering of selves, as you both gasp blindly for breath. Across the bright and cold, she knows it when you try to talk to her. Though there is, this is something 
you never really manage to understand. Germany invades Poland. The year's big song is Three Little Fishes and Someone Somewhere is Playing It. 1985. This is the end of How to Talk to Your Mother by John Hansen.